What's up everybody? Pulling some eggs today. This here is a high intensity orange dream firefly pet clown. And I believe I bred her to an orange dream Batman. So have the potential here to produce some super orange dream fire and firefly Batmans. A single dose high intensity. Let's see what we got here. Not bad. Looks like we got eight eggs. Um, so the first thing that I do when I pull a female, I just prepared a fresh tub of cypress mulch. Um, you can see it's still wet. Um, and then I'm gonna take the female and I'm gonna rinse her off in the sink, wash her off really good. The reason why I do that is to rinse off any egg residue, um, just to get that smell away because we want to get the fe uh, female feeding as soon as possible. So you want to rinse away that egg residue, otherwise she's just going to curl up as if she's still nesting the eggs. Um, and she'll probably go 60 days without eating. So you want to get her on food as soon as possible, so I'm going to rinse this girl off. Water, not too hot, not too cold. Just wash her off from head to tail. She looks pretty good for a female I just laid. Still nice fat, fat. Probably should be unloading my head clowns, but I think I'm gonna hang on to her for another year or two. I wanna use these uh, high intensities. These are some of the original high intensities that I produced to uh, continue to uh, plug it into my clown project. So we have a tub of vermiculite here. Um, I use the coarse vermiculite from Uline. I mean, the reason we, we use the coarse vermiculite because it's less likely to get all stuck on the babies and the hatchlings. Um, this stuff is pretty sticky, almost like glue. So the coarse vermiculite uh, works better, uh, in my opinion. So I use five cups of vermiculite to one cup of water. And that's to make sure that we use, that's what I've been using from from day one, and we learned that from the snake keeper, uh, Dan and Colette. Uh, way back in the day, they put out a, a, a DVD, I mean a CD, uh, when I was starting out. So, when you grab the vermiculite, you want to squeeze it. You want to have just enough moisture to stay clump. So, we'll spread this out a little bit. Grab the eggs. I see a lot of people trying to unstick the eggs. I do not unstick the eggs. I just stick them in just like this. Uh, I've had friends who've torn eggs and ripped the eggs open. So, I mean, if they're loose, you can, but there really is no need to. Um, I just stick them in there. Usually when I have a big clutch like this, I want to bury them a little bit so that the lid is not pressing too much on the top egg. If it touches a little bit, it's okay. Not a big deal. Um, these lids are a little flimsy, so they're not very uh, airtight, so they don't retain, they don't hold the moisture. Um, so I use rubber bands to keep the lid sealed. That way the eggs don't dry out and desiccate. guys all set. Uh, the next thing that I do, so this is the this is the female's card. This is her record. Um, you see I recorded her post ovulation shed 325 um, and she laid her eggs today. What's today? 427? 28. 428. So she went a little over um, that 30 day. I think she was actually due on the 24th. So today is day 34. Not a big deal. I have snakes that will lay on day 25, day 24, and I have had snakes lay as late as day 42. Um, I know people panic, tend to start getting worried. Um, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, 
unless it goes well beyond that. But typically, they'll lay their eggs when they're ready. So this is a one, two, three, four, eight egg clutch. So I record how many eggs and the date. And then I fill out a clutch card. So this was, I record the breeding, uh, Orange Dream, Batman. to high intensity OD firefly head clown I record the number of eggs and the date Jax is always hanging out. So I take the card to the top of the lid. So this is clutch number 38. Just record that on here. Number 38. OD Batman. I only have one. So I don't need to ID it. Times intensity. OD Firefly Head Clown. Then I just record eight and the date. So these should hatch somewhere around June, June 26th, June 27th, something like that. I got my little sea serpent's hot box here. It's all set up. Stop it out one. my incubators that I use um, I don't have a big huge operation I do have a, a closet incubator that I use as overflow but these are my three incubators and I started out with animal plastic incubators I actually started out with a wooden incubator way back in the day but I, I picked up a couple of animal plastic incubators really love these incubators um, pretty reliable uh, but got to plan ahead when you order them um, I think they build them uh, uh, once they receive orders, but um, really good. Had them, had them for years. I've had to change out the fans uh, a couple of times, but other than that, they've, they've been pretty reliable, pretty solid, hold great temps. So what I do, very important, I also have a Sea Serpents hot box. This is the largest one that Chris makes. Uh, another great incubate, incubator, has a light, um, so you can turn on the light and check stuff out. Um, also has the fan, heat tape in the back, um, good incubators. Now, incubator malfunctions happen. And when you have a project that you've been working on for six, seven, eight years, and your incubator malfunctions, and you lose an entire incubator uh, full of clutches, it's never happened to me, knock on wood. But I'm pretty sure it sucks. So... My alarm company installs these uh, temperature monitoring devices. So if you look, each of my incubators, this is incubator three, two, and one. They're linked directly to my alarm system. And if I get any excursions, it immediately contacts me on my phone. Um, and, then, and I know that there's something going on with the incubator. And I can get down here and intervene before I start losing eggs. So that's really, really important. Um, you guys are buying, you know, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollar snakes. You're putting in years and years of time and effort um, into some of your projects, which I think the time is more valuable than the money. Um, so take the necessary precautions. Get, you know, contact your alarm company, or there are other devices that, if you don't want an alarm system in your house, there are other devices that you can utilize that will communicate directly to your phone. Uh, there's so much technology out there now. So make sure you guys get a backup system. And if you look, I have my I have my herbstat. 
I have this, and then I have my little, I have my little uh, thermometer in there, and I'm measuring the temp at the top and the bottom. If I start to see uh, a, a huge differentiator between the top and the bottom, I know that the fan is not working because the fan circulates that warm air and keeps the uh, temperature uniform throughout the incubator. So those are my incubator tips.